this is a, a uh, kind of landmark decision for us here in the state of New Jersey, city of Newark. I say state of New Jersey because I believe that this case is going to have a significant effect on other municipalities around the state of New Jersey. Uh, it is a historical uh, uh, case as well. And uh, we probably uh, should have everybody here, four, seven, two, you know, but, you know, to each their own. I want to thank, uh, you know, the folks that have been sitting on the Civilian Complaint Review Board uh, since, we, since its inception, been working through uh, what we have had there and trying to make the most of it. And I appreciate that. I want to thank all of the, the activists in the community who've been fighting for these kinds of things for a very, very long time, uh, even before I came of age. And uh, obviously, I want to thank the law department, and particularly Avian Benjamin, who represented us here on this case to my right. And uh, I think she did an outstanding job. And, uh, And, and, and we took, when we, when we first put this together, we knew that uh, it would get to this point. People would, would ask, why did we do that? And I would always respond, uh, the reason that we may push this is so it can actually go to court. It will go to court. And it's going to have to be decided in a court. It's going to be argued. And we're going to have to decide, the courts are going to have to decide which way uh, they believe the, the city and the state should go. And before I talk about that, I just, I do want to say, I think that the majority of the officers on our police department do an outstanding job. So I just want to say that on the front end, uh, they've helped us tremendously reduce crime in our city. They have taken number of guns, hundreds of guns off of our streets. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have one of the lowest crime rates that we had in the last 50 years or so. The homicides are going down. Everything is, is, is and we get less complaints. So the narrative that we have to keep arresting people in order to reduce crime is just not the narrative of Newark. In fact, we're making less arrests and crime is still going down uh, in the city. So the relationship between arresting people and the reduction of crime is not, call, is not a causal relationship, right? Uh, and so we, we have proven that in the city of Newark and I appreciate the officers who go out every day and do what they're supposed to do to make our community safe. Obviously there are officers in the city who violate people's constitutional rights, and the consent decree said that, uh, who uh, conduct is not becoming of police officers, who treat our residents with disdain and disrespect. Uh, they're officers, according to the consent decree, who do a number of things, <coughs> who we, what, uh, you know, we believe need to be, uh, need to have oversight. And the consent decree said clearly that the office, the police department in Newark needed oversight, which is uh, one of the reasons why we continue to push forward uh, with this. I want to allow Avian uh, to, to say a few words, but uh, the part I like this, like in this the best is we conclude that the CCRB can function as intended under the ordinance, including providing an oversight role by investigating alleged police misconduct, conducting hearings, participating in the development of a disciplinary matrix, matrix making recommendations, and issuing subpoenas. That is the opinion by the appellate court. And I think it's a historic moment for this city. So, you know, I, I wish my father was alive to see, uh, you know, how far we have come uh, in that regard. So, Avian Benjamin. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor Baraka. Today is a great day for the citizens of this city. Today, our appellate division issued a 70-page opinion that said, City of Newark, you can and will have a civilian complaint review board that will not only provide oversight of our police department, but will investigate alleged police misconduct. You will conduct hearings. You will participate in the development of a disciplinary matrix. You will make recommendations, and you will issue subpoenas. Today, our appellate division sent a clear message in its published opinion that the city of Newark and other municipalities, by creating and adopting an ordinance such as this one, can proactively address a history of police misconduct and provide transparency 
and make better relationships between the community and the police officers that are sworn to protect that community. The mayor and the municipal council should be commended for pushing the envelope and creating and adopting this ordinance. <laughs> Mayor Baraka, you did this along with the municipal council. The law department was involved from the very beginning and there were many times, and Mayor, you know, we said, I don't know, Mayor, and you said do it. And we did it. And this case has been with me for the last three plus years. And today I stand here proud, not only as an attorney, but an attorney for this great city of Newark. <laughs> the appellate division with no mistake said, the ordinance that the city of Newark created is valid on its face and it does not violate due process, and it does not conflict with state law or the Attorney General guidelines. This is a great day for the city of Newark, and I am absolutely proud that I was a part of making history in this great city, because that's what this decision did. And it still may not be over, because the FOP has every right should they decide to petition for cert, but from now until they do that, and until the Supreme Court grants cert, we're going to celebrate this decision. And the CCRB is going to bring the change to this city that they have been crying for for so many years. And I want to personally thank Mayor Baraka for driving this train and for everyone in the law department as well as the city that has supported us since this journey began. Thank you so much. I would like to uh, bring uh, Richard uh, Robinson up, who has been the chairperson of the Civilian Complaint Review Board. Did I see him come in? Oh, oh behind me. Come on, come on, come on. Good evening, everybody. Um, good day, I should say. Listen, um, the CCRB in North New Jersey is eternally grateful. Um, we had a tumultuous three and a half years, <laughs> Council, um, but we persevered. And the reason why we persevered is because of our mayor. Uh, he has came to a number of meetings that we conducted, and we have been very thankful. He had been somewhat clear in his direction because of his vision um, regarding what we should be doing and what we can do. Um, Without question, um, he deserves a lot of credit. Um, in addition to that, the law department, they also deserve a lot of credit. Keanu Stewart and Ms. Um, Benjamin over here, Abby Ann Benjamin, they did a tremendous job. All right. We also have to thank the Municipal Council for passing a unanimous um, ordinance involving um, how we're going to actually steer the ship. The ship is going to be steered for perfection. Um, if you've been here the last, how long have you been mayor, bro? Five. <laughs> if you've been here the last five or some years, you will see that um, not just the city of Newark has been progressing to do well for all inclusion, but um, it's still growing with everything that's going to happen to be um, great. That greatness is part of today as well. This is a historic moment. You should all take it in because it's nothing against the police. The police are magnificent. It is now a measure where we can actually eliminate some of the bad apples that have been associated with this great fraternal organization, and we can be more productive. With that, productive, with that pro productivity, we can actually see that we can actually um, come together and do even more tremendous things. So I thank you, I thank you, Mayor, I thank you, Avion, and I thank you, um, Kiana Studer. Thank you. So I, I also want to thank uh, the Public Safety Director and the Chief of Police for being here as well uh, uh, with us. Uh, I know this is, uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult time, 
And we need to uh, make sure that people understand that this measure is a measure for all of us in the city, is a measure for the citizens and police alike, uh, and that we look at it that way. And so uh, that being said, we will open the floor to questions about this topic uh, only. So you can see me afterwards if you got something else you want to ask me. Can you say when the board will begin um, using a compensatory subpoena powers? Is that immediate? Well, law is immediate. So I think that uh, what, what, what does have to happen, though, is the structure has to be put in place for that to take place. Obviously, uh, th there's some things internally that needs to happen on the civilian review board side and the city side in terms of you know, resources and other things that, that, that we need to provide in order to make that happen. Investigators, <laughs> lawyers, whatever we need to do to make that take place. Uh, you know, it's just not going to instantly because they don't have the infrastructure to, to get that done. If I misspoke, hopefully, I'm no. sure you'll address me. Yep. Does that include training? Well, they've already been going through training uh, uh, already. And, uh, you know, these specific things I think are specialized and that these are, these are things that the, the members of the review board wouldn't do themselves. They would obviously have to get investigators to investigate and they would have to get lawyers to issue subpoenas. Right. Uh, how many um, how many complaints has the review board reviewed so far, if at all? Is it currently mm -hmm. running? Right. As of right now, the Civilian Complaint Review Board is in full force. Before we were involved with litigation, we going in the appellate matter. So we were restricted from doing things that we will want to do. All right. What we did was we directed people to the North Police Department and informed them that you will be taken care of regarding your complaint. And we will follow up on your complaint, although we were not able to do anything because of Judge Kessler's decision on the lower courts. <coughs> Mr. Robinson, would you give us an idea of how many complaints you've had since this litigation has been going on, and especially since with the appellate division? Yes. Um, Michael, we have a lot of complaints. Um, but because of our relationship with the uh, North Police Department, and again, I have to congratulate, I have to echo the mayor. Um, you know, Public Safety Director Ambrose and uh, Chief Henry have been instrumental in trying to, um, I would say, ease some of the problems and solve them. So we were very, very fortunate, but there's been a number, and we directed them to the police department, they handled them. So we actually look forward to working together. How long, how long will you still to refer those complaints to the police department? It depends on the structure in terms of how we actually get, when we get started. And then we'll actually, there'll probably be another press conference, so forth and so on. But um, as of right now, it's a celebratory moment because it's a historic moment. And we look forward to working with all partners of the city regarding on uh, trying to put together the mayor's vision regarding the CCRB. You said it on the hearing. You heard Ms. Benjamin and you heard the, uh, uh, the other attorneys in this case, the other one from the FOP. What decision were you expecting from this court based on the questions that justice had asked? I was present at the uh, appellant um, hearing or arguments. Attorney Benjamin was not just articulate, she was very, very patient because she was given the same scenario questioning at least 10 times. I'm sorry, some of you didn't um, see that, but I seen it and I was um, very, very, um, I would say, energized because she showed deliberate, deliberate patience. And that's something that a lot of people don't do in front of um, any, even the lower courts. So um, I expected something favorable I believed in Mayor Baraka. I really did. I wouldn't have ever came on board if I didn't believe in him. So um, just want to say thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I have another question. So the ruling said that um, uh, the decisions made by the review board aren't binding. Is right. It, how does the city feel about that? Well, uh, what, what, what they said is that, you know, we could not bind the chief to make a, a decision based on clear error. Uh, but, but what happens is the review board also has its findings and their public findings. Uh, and if they contradict what the internal affairs comes up with, obviously there's a public discourse about that. And that's really what we, what the, is intended to do is create transparency around what's going on. It creates discourse and discussion around the processes that are happening in the police department 
and how they arrived at findings versus how another uh, body, a similar body, r arrived at a different finding. And I think that that gives us the opportunity to have discussions that were not had uh, previously. And Mr. Mayor, you mean public discussions where the CCRB would be able to call the um, uh, finder of facts in to a hearing, a public hearing, and have it all hashed out in public? Well, I mean, once, is, once the findings are in, I mean, they make a recommendation. The police department through I, 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 the internal affairs and the chief, uh, in this case, the public safety director, makes their uh, decision about how this thing uh, should bear out. Uh, if, if those are contradictory, then yeah, these are public uh, findings and we have a public discord. We have a, we have a municipal council, we have an administrative uh, uh, office and a mayor, we have all these folks that will obviously have discussion about findings that are public, right? So if the internal affairs comes out with something and the CCRB comes out with something different, I don't think that uh, people are shy uh, to have the kind of discourse that's necessary around that. And this city has never had that before? Well, we never had a civilian review board before. So, no. This is the first time we've actually had a civilian review board of any sort. Uh, you know, even the one that the lower court said that, you know, wouldn't allow them to, we never had that. So this, this, all of this is brand new uh, for this municipality. Uh, and we intend on moving uh, forward as, as, as expeditiously as we can. Have you heard from other municipalities in New Jersey asking about, inquiring about newer CCRD ordinance and setting it up and how it went about it and so forth? Well, in, in uh, you know, the urban mayors and, and, and folks like that ask about the progress or where the, <coughs> the, uh, the, 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 the case was in terms of the appellate division and, and what the outcome was. So I guess today I'm sure we'll get a lot of phone calls when they find out the outcome. And, you know, a lot of people want to, want to do these things, they just don't either have the resources or the, or the, uh, or the will to have the fight, right? They don't want to have the fight uh, that we had. People knew uh, that because we did this that there would be a fight. And so they were hoping that we would avoid a fight and just settle for the smaller thing. And so I would get into discourse with people, even the press would ask you why you did that when you uh, know that it was the, the you know the court was going to rule it down, and I would always refer them to Brown versus Board of Education uh, in cases like that. I mean, we don't do things simply before for the immediate. We do it uh, because what we envision could take place uh, if we raise enough uh, you know power to be able to push it what we need to push. And uh, this is an example of what we can do if we stick to it and be patient. That's it. Oh, thank you for coming. Appreciate your uh, questions. Yeah.